Hey, what's up guys, Auto Fanatics. So today's video is gonna be on the brand new Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which is the 223 platform. This is a 2022 S580 formatic. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the design updates on the exterior. I'm gonna show you the interior. I'm actually gonna go over a little bit of the tech on the control center in the car, which is super, super important. And that is probably the major, major breakthrough uh, as far as an update from the prior generation of this car. And I'm gonna also take it on a road test. And I actually have the opportunity to have this car for several days this week. And I've been driving it every day and compiling my thoughts. And I'm gonna give you guys a lot of good feedback. Uh, if you guys watch the content, you know I'm gonna go into like uh, details, tech, history, and all of that stuff. So if you look at the car right now, based on the prior generation, I think the prior generation was killed off in 2020, uh, towards the end of 2020. So they kind of redesigned the car a little bit. Now, if anybody doesn't know about this platform, this particular platform, this is called the 223 platform, but the architecture of this car started out in development in 2014. Now in 2015, they came out with the new S-Class, which is the latest and greatest, but it had a lot of growing pains. There was a lot of issues with that car. It was a new platform, a lot of new technology, and they didn't really iron that out until the 2018 model year. Now, if you guys follow the Auto Fanatic channel, I did a video on a 2018 white S-Class a couple of years ago, and I kind of explained that car from top to bottom and all the engineering and all of that. And I actually probably linked that video in the description of this video if you guys wanna go back and check that out. Now, the one thing you're gonna notice up front as far as the design, they actually changed it. It doesn't have that very sleek, angular design anymore. So what they did on the design, they kind of made the grill a little bit more fatter and more upright. So they changed the slope back, you can see it right there, of the front grill, and it has a little bit more of like a bull nose effect. I mean, you either love it or hate it. It's starting to grow on me, but when you look at the car from the front, it still has the typical S-Class presence. You have the badge up there, the badge around the grill. You have the chrome trim. You have some uh, piano black trim as well. You have some really, really cool LED headlamps. You probably will see that in some of the drive portions of the video. These things are flickering like crazy. So these are really, really projector beam uh, LED headlamps. Really, really cool stuff. But uh, like I said, that, as far as like when you're looking at the car, there's not a lot that's been changed, but a couple of things. Uh, number one, you're gonna notice this. Uh, this definitely was taken from a Tesla influence. If you look at it here, these are flush mounted door handles. Now you can see right there, very, very sturdy. It's got the Mercedes-Benz logo that's etched in there. And when you pull on it, it's like rigid. It actually reminds me of the old 126 S-Classes where it had that pull grab. This is actually very important for safety for any kind of um, firemen or police to get you out of the car in case of a crash or a fire. You need a really, really good grab handle. And the handles retract out when the car is unlocked. And then when the car goes into sleep mode, they kind of pull back in. Really, really cool feature. And I actually really like that because on this particular car, unlike a Tesla, on the Tesla, they feel very cheap, okay? Very, very flimsy. I don't like the build quality of any of the Teslas. That's something that I'm gonna discuss in this um, video as well, as far as why the buyer of this car is not gonna get a Tesla. And really, it's kind of like, I kind of see what they did. They kind of bridged the gap as far as what people want today. They want tech, they want a simple interface in the car, like a touchpad. And that's what this car has. So this has the S-Class lineage, it has the pedigree, it has the luxury image, but it also has a lot of modern tech that's gonna satisfy a lot of tech savvy executives today and people that you know really, really want that in their cars and they don't really align themselves with the Tesla EV type of car. So back here as well, another little design thing that they've done, you can see back here, they kind of kept this shape very similar to the prior generation but they kind of broke it up by curving this down a little bit. Very, very different, and it actually changes the rear three-quarter profile quite a bit. And I actually think I like it. It actually makes the car look a little bit wider. Uh, it gives it a little bit of a different presence, and I really, really like it a lot. Now, this particular car has the optional 20-inch Y-spoke wheels, okay? And this has a black gloss finish inside the spokes and a diamond cut finish on the face. They're really, really nice. These are about a $1,300 option, according to what I saw on the MBUSA website. Now, I don't have the window sticker of this car, but I'm just gonna tell you guys when we get into the vehicle, some of the options that it has. And uh, wrap around to the back, you can see, I think they did a little bit of a nicer job integrating the rear tail lamps on this model versus the prior generation. So the only complaint that I have, not really a complaint, it's just a personal preference. I like the front nose of the model before this, the iteration before this, a little bit better. I just think it looked a little sportier and a little sleeker, but this is actually starting to grow on me. You can see down below, we have the uh, stainless exhaust finishers that are integrated into the lower bumper. It's just a really, really nice car. Uh, this one is in diamond white metallic, which is a three-stage paint process. Uh, beautiful color combination, and it's got the brown and black 
Napa leather, the exclusive leather inside, which back in the days, if you guys follow Mercedes-Benz, uh, they used to call that the Dizinho colors uh, as far as these kind of packages. But now you could actually order them and they're just not calling it Dizinho anymore. But yeah, really, 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 really beautiful car. Let me just uh, go into the interior. That's really where the magic happens on this car. We'll start at the rear first. So if you look here, really, really interesting design. They, this is completely unconventional for Mercedes-Benz, but this is actually you know, their flagship model, and they trickle down a lot of the design elements from the S-Class into now the E-Class and the new C-Class. So this car has the optional Burmester stereo with the 4D setup. I'll show you guys that as well. Uh, instead of having like the typical Mercedes-Benz burl walnut or eucalyptus wood, this is black piano trim with these aluminum strakes going down the middle really really modern very very nice touch you have the diamond quilted stitching on the doors but something i want to show you guys as far as something that's very very different uh, that you've never seen in a mercedes this control center here for the seat switch these rear seats recline and they're heated they do all kinds of cool stuff it's actually away from the door panel so it's not recessed in you have ambient lighting all around here all of this here is ambient lighting i'm going to show you that as well in the video how it changes colors uh, we have privacy shades from the rear quarter glass to the rear windows. Just absolutely amazing what's in this car. So you can see back here, uh, the car comes with these, like, I don't know, they're like microfiber uh, pillows. I'm not really sure how to remove it. It's not my car, so I don't want to mess around with it. But you could see here, the car has plenty, plenty of room. Now, back in the days, Mercedes-Benz used to have the standard wheelbase version, and then they had the SEL version, which was the extended wheelbase. Now, this particular model, uh, you know, they're only doing one wheelbase. And I think if you want to get a larger version of this car, it's probably going to be the Maybach version that may be a couple of inches longer. But I have not seen or compared a Maybach uh, to really tell you that. But just wanted to show you. It's absolutely amazing. So we got a lot of storage in the car. So this is actually really nice. It actually reminiscent of the W126 uh, seatbacks, the way it's designed. Over here, we have... A storage cubby in there we have a little area you can put your phone we got cup holders right there okay something that's really unconventional for an s-class they actually integrated a rear trunk pass-through so you can kind of you know if you're going to the home depot you're going to get some fluorescent light bulbs or something like that you're going to get a pass-through now so that's really really cool you can have a button in the front of the car to push the headrest down uh back here we have your climate controls which is fully adjustable you also have a little cubby here. I'm not really sure how useful this is. And you open that down there, and we have a 115 volt. So you can plug in a hair dryer, a laptop charger. You have some micro USB plugs. I mean, this is actually just a perfect, perfect road trip vehicle. So you can see the front door here. Now over here, instead of having the conventional headlamp switch on the driver's side left, they integrated it into the actual door panel. It's actually kind of slick. Uh, the way they did that, this is the Burmester speaker. This thing pulls out and spins. Very, very cool, and I'll show you guys that as well when we go into the tech portion of the video. Uh, we've got a little grab handle here. So it's actually integrated, so you're not grabbing here. You're going to put your fingers back here to pull and close the door shut. We have very good storage compartment in here for an umbrella. You have water bottles, uh, road maps, whatever you guys want. Anything could go in here. Here is your trunk release button right there. So these front seats are active. They do massaging, heating, cooling, everything. I'll explain that to you uh, when we get back inside the in interior of the car and I'll show you some of the tech. Now, we have a brand new multifunction steering wheel. You have all your shortcut buttons up here, but the main heart of this interior really is this whole redesign. So gone are the round conventional AC vents. We have these vertical aluminum vents, really, really slick, very, very modern. Uh, it just gave the car a completely new design dynamic compared to anything that Mercedes-Benz ever offered in the past, okay? You can see that there, and it's got the diamond quilted stitching. You know, this was pretty uh, popular with the Bentleys and Range Rovers back in the day. It's very British, uh, but they're incorporating that into the Mercedes-Benz right now. We have more storage in there. You got some USB ports. Now, over here, you have your cup holders. You have some more ch car chargers. You have more USB ports. So the car has plenty, plenty of storage space inside the interior of the car. Uh, let me just get into the driver's seat. So, as you could see, another thing that was changed, we have these AC vents that are really slickly integrated with the stereo center channel right up here. And you have your adjustments that you could open and close them and kind of change it. Really, really cool. The only thing that I don't like about this is that sometimes on a sunny day, which is actually very frequently, 
you will get the reflection of this bezel into the windshield. I don't know why uh, they didn't do something a little bit different about maybe changing the finish or changing the angle of this pod, but that's just one of those things I wanted to point out in this video. So over here we have full-size glove box, got some stuff in there. That is the um, Mercedes-Benz fragrance dispenser. I'll show you guys that and demonstrate that as well in this video as well. But other than that, I mean, it's just well-built. You can hear it. You can hear the solid. Everything's well-built. The car is built with utmost precision. If you guys want to see a really cool video, uh, go online, and I'll probably link it in this video as well. They actually built a special factory for this new generation S-Class. It's called Factory 56. It is highly automated, highly digitized. Um, they use a lot of digital um, scanning and digital 3D printing when they develop this car. And the factory is very, very automated with robotics and the utmost precision. So when you look at this car from the outside, I mean, the gaps are perfect. There's no problem. This car, particular, this car has about 15,000 miles of New York City miles, which shakes the crap apart. But all the gaps are perfect, okay? This is not a Cadillac. This is not an American car. The German car companies like Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, BMW, they get the build quality spot on. And that's just what customers that are going to be paying $150,000 for this type of car are only going to respect and want is a perfect built car. Uh, no issues with the paint. I actually detailed this car recently. There's no fisheye. There's no runs. There's no dirt in the paint. So the quality of the car is top, top notch. Uh, another thing, too, I want to show you, just reemphasize, all the trim now has a matte aluminum finish, so it's not chrome. And I actually really like that gives a little bit of a sportier feel and it actually matches really well with the diamond cut face on the wheels. So another thing too, on the exterior of the car, which I'll show you, this car has full 360 degree cameras, front and rear. You can see some of it there, down there. I mean, this thing is phenomenal. So if you actually can't park this car, you probably shouldn't be driving. Uh, that's how uh, easy it is. And I'll show you on the heads up display and everything else in the car, but uh, beautiful car. So let's get into the trunk. We'll show you the storage right now. All right, guys, we're over in the trunk of the car. Now, it's not a huge trunk, but it is pretty deep. You can put about four lawn chairs in there. I actually tested it. Uh, but you have a lot, of cons you know, a lot of space on the sides. I mean, just look, look how much this bulges out. It's about a good 10 inches uh, on both sides. That's because the car has a very sophisticated stereo, a hell of a lot of electronics. You have a lot of computers, and really, where are you going to hide them all? You have to find a location in the trunk. So that does cause a little bit of an issue with trunk space. But to be honest with you, a car like this, somebody's not going to be lugging around that much stuff. This is a luxury executive car. There's no spare. Uh, this car has run flats, and I don't even see, maybe it does have, no, I don't even see an inflator kit in this particular car. So apparently, it does not come with one, and maybe that is an option. That's a front license plate bracket. But uh, you can see it there. There's the pass-through. And you have a little tie-down over here, which is kind of cool if you want to tie down your uh, hangers or suits. But you can see it there. So it's not bad. Uh, they're listing it on the website as 12.9 cubic feet of storage. But I think it's pr pretty good because of what you have here and all the compartments in the doors, center console, in the front and rear. It has plenty of storage for anybody's active lifestyle. All right, guys. So this is the power plant of the S580 4Matic. This is a 4-liter by turbo v8 with a mild hybrid system produces 496 horsepower 516 foot pounds of torque and it's mated to a nine speed g-tronic transmission that is so smooth you don't even feel it shifting now the way I, this car is a mild hybrid is very similar to what bmw is doing it has a starter generator and it actually controls the water pump and the air conditioning compressor. And it also gives the car a little bit more uh, juice, you know, during certain types of intermittent power. So this is what it is. It's, you know, hell of a lot of power. This car is 4,778 pounds, uh, give or take. Now the options on this car are probably gonna change the weight of the vehicle. So it's about, you know, a little under 5,000 pounds. And this thing gets up and scoots and does a zero to 60 in like 4.4 seconds, which is very, very impressive for a car of this size. Uh, you can see the car is built, you know, a lot of aluminum, a lot of um, really cool different steels and, you know, crumple zones and everything integrated into the monocoque of this chassis. It is absolutely phenomenal. You can see the engine sits really, really low into the engine bay and uh, it just feels freaking great. So I just want to show you that real quick. It's not too uh, fancy and you don't really see anything under the hood, but the turbos are smaller. They spool up quicker. You don't even hear this car run. I mean, literally. And also another reason why they do the mild hybrid system is because of the active start stop. By integrating it the way BMW and Mercedes are doing and probably a lot of other brands, it makes the start and stop not as intrusive. So you don't even feel it when it's happening. And that's really what people are complaining about always with that feature is that it lunges or it jerks or it startles you in traffic. With something like this, it's seamless and you don't even feel it. 
All right, guys, so we are in the interior of the new Mercedes-Benz S-Class. This thing is absolutely quiet. The engine is running. You don't even hear it because of the occupancy of the double pane windows and the extensive use of sound isolation. I just want to show you something real quick before I set the camera up and I show you the command center. This thing is going to blow your mind. If anybody that's used a smartphone or a tablet and you're very savvy with uh, motions and haptics, this thing is going to blow your mind because they completely cleaned up this whole center console area. They got rid of the stupid wheel with the touchpad. That's gone. This is the new way of the future with tech in cars. It's right here. It's integrated nicely. It's not sticking out of the screen the way BMW and Audi does it. They just did a phenomenal, phenomenal job with the design of this car inside and out. So something I want to show you was really cool is this is the slider. Look at that. You just use your finger and you slide it back and the panoramic roof opens up. I mean, how cool is that? That it's all touch sensitive and it's done so well because Mercedes-Benz, they're some of the best engineers in the world. Uh, you know, all of this stuff. You know, it's just so cool on how they integrate it and how well it works. So everything is touch screen. So if anybody out there that has used an iPhone, a Samsung, or a tablet, whether it's an iPad or a Microsoft tablet, you're gonna figure this all out. So everything is touch. So we're gonna go into settings. Okay, so here we have driver's assistance, which is your collision avoidance. You can kind of set this up. You could change your ESP, your lane keep assist. Actually, that's the AC kicking on. And even the HVAC is all integrated into this touch panel. So there's no manual knobs or controls for anything. Everything is kind of built in. Then you have this little bar down here, which kind of gives you a little bit of a shortcut menu for the volume, for your hazard lamps right there and a couple of other features as well. So we're gonna go to vehicle, just to show you that there. So we have manual shifting. You could actually turn on and off the paddles. Uh, there's just all crazy stuff inside of here. So here's the light system. Dynamic low beams, daytime running lights, interior, exterior lighting, ambient lighting. This is like really, really cool, but I'm gonna show you that in a couple of moments. We're gonna go back and right here, your home button. So if you ever get confused, there's your home button. There's your Sirius satellite radio. You have your navigation in the, in the background, and it's also copying that over to the LCD instrumentation panel. Uh, but what's really cool, so here's your HVAC. So we had, we're at 65 degrees. You want to change your temp. You could hear the haptics, okay, very, very lightly. You could hear it in the speakers, and you could definitely adjust that. And then you're going to adjust the driver's side fan speed just like that. Okay, we could do the same thing on the passenger side. So you have controls for the front and for the rear of the car. So we're gonna go to the climate control menu. So now we can kind of do some, some special setups here. We could do setups for the seats. I mean, this thing does everything. Air quality, another option. Uh, you could do fresh air mode for pollen and odors. You could do ionization. Okay, it cleans the air inside the vehicle, similar to like what an ozone generator would do. If you have like, if you go in the car and you uh, carry a lot of takeout food, that would definitely be great. You have your fragrance. The fragrance is the little can canister that's inside the passenger side glove compartment. I'm gonna show you more about that as well. This thing is just super, super crazy cool. So we're gonna go back to the home menu. Now, we're gonna go here, dynamic. We're gonna hit this button on the bar. Now, this is gonna give you your drive modes. We have eco, we have comfort, we have sport, we have sport plus, and we have individual. So individual, you can kind of go in here. It's gonna give you the settings menu. And you could go in there and you could tailor all of this. Your drive mode, okay, your suspension setting, your steering effort, okay, which is really, really cool. And then, you, you know, your ESP and all that, and then you could save it. So we're going to go back again, okay, go back into dynamic. So we're going to leave it in Sport Plus because that's where I'm going to do the road test on uh, just because I want to use the paddles and I want to uh, kind of get the most out of this car. Now, we have manual shifting, so this is going to turn on the paddles, but you could turn that off. We have Parktronic. Uh, we can lower the active uh, headrest in the rear. We have steering assist. This is another option that this car has. We have active lane keep assist. Uh, just a whole bunch of cool stuff. Check this out. These are the 360-degree cameras. I mean, this thing is so cool. Let me just put it in reverse. So you can kind of see it's got the rear, it's got the front, and it has this really cool blue ring around the front nose and the rear of the car. That's going to prevent you from banging up the corners, your wheels, or your bumpers. And look, I'll, I'll back up right now. You can kind of see it in motion. Just so I want to demonstrate it for you guys. Okay. 
really, really cool, really, really cool 360 degree camera system. So this is definitely part of their safety system uh, and it just makes the car so much easier to use. Now we're gonna go here, we're gonna hit the car icon again. We're gonna go dynamic, okay? So we got all that set up. So your HVAC is very easy to use. It's very, very simple. You got this, you got this, your rear defroster, and you go to your climate menu. Now these seats do heating, cooling, massage. They do all kinds of crazy stuff in the car. So it's pretty cool. You could use your finger to kind of zoom in and out on the map, very similar to a Tesla Plaid. I mean, the technology is, it's just exactly what people are so used to using today. And it just makes a hell of a lot of sense. So we're gonna go back here, go back to the home. We're gonna do entertainment. Okay, so this is part of the Burmester sound system. So we have sound profiles. We have your equalizer. You can adjust your bass, your mid, your treble, your balance fader, okay, front and rear. And this is, of course, you could kind of move it with your finger. Very, very simple. Reset that to zero. Now 4D, this has the 4D option and it has for each individual seat. So even though it's a five passenger, so it's got for four seats, the ones in the front, ones in the rear. I have both of the ones in the front set at two. What this does, it has bass shakers in the seat. If you have it up to 10, it feels like the car is broken and then it's like constantly shaking your back. I don't really like that. So two, it's good if you want to listen to this thing, really high output uh, sound system, this thing is going to blow you away. If anybody that's into music or you go to a lot of concerts, if you're the type of person that always is you know, standing in the floor seats, you want to get that most impact of a concert, whether it's a rock concert or Billy Joel, doesn't really matter, you're going to want to get this updated Burmester sound system because it makes this car feel like a concert hall because it's got such great isolation and cabin acoustics that it is so finely tuned that this thing is going to blow you away. Back in the days, we used to do custom stereos. I used to do custom stereos in cars, and customers would spend twenty to thirty thousand dollars back in the '90s to get something that sound even close to this. And this thing is turnkey. You get in the car, and it comes with the car already. So you got your VIP seat, which is my seat, and we have it time aligned. So everything is going to be kind of adjusted the way the speakers are going to come out with the outputs and the frequencies. So it's all digitally designed by Burmester or Mercedes Benz. It, it is just freaking incredible. So I just wanted to show you that as well. Now we go back here, we're gonna go back here. I wanna, I wanna show you this interior lighting. So, okay, so here we go, we got settings, we're back to the settings. Now we're gonna go to comfort. All right, this is pretty cool. So we have, this is, this is wild. You could adjust your seats, you could do your massage, you could do your ambient lighting. This is what really would cool. So you can see the ambient lighting in the background and it wraps all around the car and we have it in the footwell and under here. So what we could do here, we could do the brightness and we could raise and lower so watch it in the camera we're going to drop the ambient lighting practically off and we're going to go all the way full steam ahead okay you could do all kinds of color effects so now we're in we're in blue we're going to switch that over now we're like a natural white now we're like a purplish uh, red like a fuchsia color go back here we're in green so this is really cool when you're driving at night and you're going on a long road trip it just sets the mood uh, very, very cool stuff. So we're going to get this back. I actually like it in the purple zone. I think it's kind of cool. Now, this is really wild. It's got an option called Energizing Comfort. So we have different settings. We have freshness, warmth, vitality, joy, well-being. Okay, these are pre-programmed settings that are going to play some music, some tones. It's going to massage the seat. It's going to change the climate. It's going to dim the lights. It's going to totally make this into like a very relaxing place that you're going to want to be in. And to be honest with you, it feels like you're going into a spa, not a luxury car you're going to be wanting to drive on the road. But if you're in traffic, especially in New York City traffic or Chicago traffic, where it's like bumper to bumper to get home, you're going to want to play around with this. So check this out. So we're going to hit the driver's side. See? Changes the tone. Now the seat is actually giving me more of a, a needed massage in my lower lumbar and in my lower uh, seat cushion. I mean, this thing is totally insane, you know, for what you get in this car. So this is why this is like the greatest leap in technology for a Mercedes-Benz product because they never had anything that came close to this. And then you're going to kind of blast through this as well. Voice control, haptics, this thing has everything. So you could just basically spend a couple of hours with this card. You're going to start to learn it and uh, see how to use it. But like I said, enough of that. I'm going to get the camera set up. We're going to go for a drive, and I'm going to talk more about the brand new Mercedes-Benz S580 4Matic in a few moments. So stay tuned to the rest of the video. All right, guys. So this is the drive portion of the video. 
in the brand new Mercedes-Benz S580. And uh, I got a couple of different cameras set up. We're gonna see how the footage shows up, but I got the air AC on because it got a little warm out today, but this car is so comfortable and so quiet. And that's something that you're gonna see in the audio and also hear it in the audio and uh, see it in the video is how stable it is. And even when we were doing some rolling B shots, uh, you could capture the vehicle, like the body of the vehicle is kind of stable and you could see the suspension and the wheels moving, but the body is stable. And that's really how they design this car is to feel like you're floating on air. We're in the comfort mode now, but I'm gonna go through the settings as we drive. And, and I just wanna show you, look, we're hitting some really bad potholes right here. And it's not shaking the car, there's no rattles. And this car has got almost 20,000 miles on it. And 20,000 miles of New York City miles, that's like 100,000 miles or more uh, elsewhere in the country because the roads here are so destructive. They just destroy and beat the cars up, including your body. But I could feel the car floating and we're in the comfort mode. But something that I've been noticing as I've been driving this car, regardless of the mode, even it's such a big vehicle, right? But it doesn't feel like I'm in this big floaty car because it's got such good active body control. And that's something that I just wanted to emphasize in this video is how well it controls. And the steering, that's probably the biggest thing that impresses me uh, when they came out with this new generation car is how they were able to take such a large vehicle and still give it enough dynamic feel in the EPS, the electronic power steering system, to make the car feel sure-footed and not floaty. Like sometimes cars of this size, you, you put a lot of input and the car is like all over the place overcorrecting itself, but the way they designed this, it is not like that. So we're gonna change the dynamic mode. We're in economy, we're gonna go into sport plus. Cause that's kind of, we want, we want everything in sport because I'm, you know, I'm all into high performance cars and I just want to see and show you guys how this thing handles. Now this car has a little bit of an active rear steer based on the suspension technology that's in this car and all the computers and driver's aids and everything else. But like we're driving on some bad, bad bumps right here. And the car is perfectly composed and that's in the stiffest suspension setting. So we're gonna go through right here, get a little bit of float but I could feel the rear end of the car. I mean, it's a big car. No tire screeching at all. Now that bus that's right next to us is really loud and you can hear it from the audio. It's like, it's quiet in here. We don't have, we're not gonna have the stereo on just because if I'm playing some music, we're gonna end up with a copyright red flag with YouTube and they're gonna pull the video down. But I just wanna cruise. You know, we're cruising at 50 and I'm gonna go into we're gonna shift with the paddles. Even the turn signal indicator is, is like nice. It's not annoying. You can listen to it. It's, it just has the right volume. It makes the right sounds. It has the right progressive cancellation feel. And you look at 60 miles an hour, I'm sitting back and enjoying the drive. Now, if you want, you could go through the settings and set the massage seats. You wanna do heating and cooled. You wanna blow, uh, blow your ears out with the Burmese stereo. So you're gonna get everything in one complete package. And you know, I, I hate to say it, but it is a good value. Yes, the vehicle's expensive, but when you look at the competition and you look at what you're getting, I think it's an exceptional value just because of the quality, uh, the level of tech, the fit and finish, uh, the ride, you know, the way it rides, it rides amazing. I mean, this ride quality is kind of like, you know, really a signature of what you want an executive luxury sedan to feel like. It's like seamless, look at this, we're almost at 80 miles an hour. And it's so quiet in this cabin, there's no road noise, there's no wind noise coming from the exterior door mirrors. It's whisper quiet. Take it all in in the audio, you guys can hear it. I mean, it's just unbelievable how good this car really is. But uh, yeah, this is a great car. Now, you know, some people say, hey, these cars are boring, they're overpriced, they don't make you feel special. I, I disagree with that. Special for everyone is different. You know, for me, when I want special, I want, you know, loud, aggressive, raw, whatever. That's, that's my personality, that's what I want. But I think the guy that wants an executive luxury sedan like this, you know, he's a businessman, he's probably older, could be, could be older, we, we don't know. I mean, the guy that owns this car is in his 70s, but, you know, it, it really caters to your personality and what you want. Some people don't want loud, windy, wind noise, they don't want aggressive, they don't want a harsh ride. Um, you know, and this really checks off all the boxes of what you want in a luxury sedan.
I mean, you really couldn't do it better than this. Yeah, it's got good handling, too. And it's rock stable. So as I'm putting this little input in right here, you see how the steering automatically centers itself, okay? That's something that I wanted to emphasize in here is the geometry of the front suspension, the caster angle. That's what's gonna set your steering wheel to center itself is, is a high caster angle. So they've designed it with the right geometry and enough feedback from the EPS system that it gives the car a very stable, confident feel. Like, like look, I'm 75 miles an hour and I'm pushing a 5,000 pound big car you know, and I, look, I'm doing this on purpose just to show you guys in the video. And it's perfectly stable. Uh, it's very, very impressive that they were able to really, really get this platform dialed in in terms of luxury. Now, when you drive the BMW 7, I don't know, those cars just really disappoint me. They don't ride as well as, as this car. Their steering is a little too vague. Uh, you don't get that feedback in the BMW uh, the Audi too, the Audi feels very heavy in the front end. It feels a little bit more like a, a little bit more push than I would like. Uh, and that's an all wheel drive car as well with the Quattro system. But you know, this car is just incredible. You get a little bit of engine, you know, like you could hear the engine, but it's like so toned down, you know? Now look, this is just with the window open, you can hear in the audio, the ambient noise and then when you close it it's gone it's it's completely canceled out it's gone and that's why the acoustics of this car are so important because it just gives you that refined feeling because if this car did everything that I'm mentioning and then it had like a loud cabin or wind noise then you're really gonna get turned off saying you know what it does all these other things well it rides well it looks well but it's noisy and I don't think you're gonna want that in a car of this level, especially at this price category. And they really, really acoustically tuned this car between the dampening and the, and the window panes. But it's just a joy to drive, you know? Like, I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. Oh, it's a beautiful McLaren right there. You know, that's my style, something like that. But if I wanted a luxury executive sedan, this is gonna be the one to get, 100%. I turned off the lane keep assist and all of that because it just buzzes your seat and it drives you crazy but it's just unbelievable we're gonna go into different mode setting let's go into comfort back in the comfort all right so we're getting a little bit more float in the chassis which is what you're gonna want and I'm purposely in the right lane because it's a little broken up over here and I just want to show you guys so you can see it and audibly hear it you know how the car is coping with it because a lot of you guys maybe drive you know uh, in the New York City metro area you might be near a major metropolitan area like downtown Chicago, Peoria, Illinois, uh, South Florida, and you're gonna need a car that's gonna kinda cope with all the conditions. Yeah, she just floats and cruises, man. So you can kinda like, you know, set your um, Distronic cruise control and you could just sit back and really enjoy this car on a long road trip. And I, I, I feel the float, but it's like, it's float, but it's controlled float. You know, that's what I wanted to emphasize in this video. It, it's not, wallowing and making me feel sketchy like some SUVs would do it actually has a controlled chassis with just enough dynamic feedback to make you not feel like you're going to kill yourself you know if you're doing high speed maneuvers and all that but I remember back in the 90s with the W140 chassis that was one of my favorite S-classes just because it was built at a time where they over engineered the car in terms of the build quality and I remember driving those cars. We used to work on them all the time. And I used to drive them on the Henry Hudson Parkway going to, down to New York City. And I remember the car would float almost identical up and down to what I'm feeling in this chassis right here. But that car had a throttle pedal that felt like a brick. It had heavy recirculating ball steering. It, it didn't handle for anything. It was on 16 inch tires. I remember Michelin MXZ4s and, and the car handled horrible. But in a straight line, you can hit 150 miles an hour and you, you were like, boom, you were gone. Uh, the momentum and velocity that th those things used to pick up was insanity. Uh, but this thing just takes, takes that W140 S-Class to the new level of modern times in 2022. Unbelievable, because I think customers today, they're very d discerning. You know, the technology is evolving at such a rapid pace that we're not gonna settle for anything less. Uh, and that's why they really went to town 
on this new generation S Class. And I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to hold for these cars uh, as far as you know changing the V8 motor or what they're going to do. But I don't know. I just hope that Mercedes Benz continues on with the S Class legacy. But you want to be able to get into the car from generation to generation and notice a new layout, new tech. You know, new driver feedback and all of that. And I think that's what really this car did. As I'm cruising on the highway, you can see it. It's perfectly comfortable. It's cruiser friendly. And it's got, you know, it's got the right steering for this type of a car. It really does. It's got amazing brakes. It's got active brake assist. Loads of safety, uh, active and passive safety that's built into this chassis. But uh, I actually, I'm very, very happy. I'm very impressed with the improvements over the generation that came out in 2015, which was then perfected in 2018 and then phased out in 2020 and now we have the new one uh, right here for 2022 and it is a phenomenal package. I think it's an outstanding value considering what things cost today with the rate of inflation and you know economies of scale but this car checks off all the boxes if you're looking for the best luxury executive sedan and you need the space, you need the tech, you want the comfort, you have a family of four, you maybe have a family of five, uh, even if you have a pet, you have a large dog, throw them in the back and uh, take them to work. And it's also a great car, like I said, if you want to take clients in it, you know, clients for lunch and for real estate showings or meetings or whatever you guys are going to do, perfect car. You just jump in it. It's comfortable. Everybody's going to be happy to get out of it. And uh, that's it, man. So there's really not much to say about it. I'm going to pull over. We just finished our drive and I'll give you guys my final thoughts on the brand new Mercedes-Benz S-Class. So like I said, the car is incredible. It's built with absolute precision. Fit and finish is superb. Ride quality is probably the best in its class. It's got the image, it's got the interior, it's got the tech. So I definitely think it's the top luxury sedan in the world in this price category. Like I said, when, when I mean top, uh, we're not gonna kind of like put this in the same category as a Bentley or a Rolls Royce because those are like double the price. And then we start adding options, it could almost be triple the price. This is basically the best executive luxury sedan you're gonna buy hands down. Uh, I don't care, BMW is not gonna come close to this, Audi, Lexus, I'm sorry, they're good cars but they're not gonna to come to the level of quality, image, dealer network, build quality, performance, um, everything. The tech is phenomenal in this car. Uh, like I mentioned also, you know, as we were driving it along, I mean, this car pretty much does everything you're gonna want in a luxury car. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, they're very hard to get now with the chip shortages. Uh, you're probably gonna pay over sticker for one of these. And if you think about it historically, back in the 80s, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class was like 70 grand, maybe in the high 60s, high 70s. Now the car starts at like 117 and it's going up to like 160. And if you can't get the car, you're gonna pay a dealer ADM. There's just no way about it because you can't get this vehicle right now. Uh, and it's just such a rewarding car to drive. Like for someone that's into performance cars and likes hard, loud, aggressive cars, this was like a breath of fresh air to drive something so different for a week and kind of enjoy it on the busted up roads where you don't feel it, you don't hear it and you get out of the car and you're not beat up and you're not worn out like you're driving a high performance car, it's a very, very different experience. This is awesome to go in and out of New York City, in and out of downtown Chicago, uh, in and out of downtown Miami. I mean, this is an awesome, awesome vehicle. You could pass your time in traffic with all the bells and whistles in tech. You have the luxury, the comfort, the performance, the stereo is outstanding. And the interior, like I said, we'll show you that again. You know, this is a really, really nice place to be. Uh, no matter which way you look at it, it's a place you're not gonna wanna be uh, concerned about spending too much time in on a long road trip. It's comfortable, it's beautiful to look at, it's very modern, um, and like I said, it's, it's you know the, the latest uh, state-of-the-art tech from Mercedes-Benz where they took this platform that was initially developed in 2014, and this is the latest and greatest iteration. And it's only gonna get better from here. Now, with the automotive world and everything going to EV, Will the next generation S-Class be a V8? We don't know. It might be a four cylinder. It might be a complete hybrid. We really don't know. But uh, if you like the internal combustion engine, you like the power of a V8, you like the torque, uh, this is gonna be the car that you're gonna want on your shopping list, 100%. I mean, uh, even the looks of it, it just looks so damn good. And like I said, there's a lot of luxury cars out there on the market, but every car and every brand is gonna appeal to everyone individually very, very differently. You know, some people hate Mercedes, some people love Lexus, some people like Audis. It really depends on your personal preference, and that's why in the life that we live in modern times, there are choices. And if it was up to me, 
this would be the choice for the ultimate luxury sedan. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the drive. I enjoyed talking and sharing a little bit about the background of the car, the technical aspect of the car, and showing you guys how this car you know, features, functions, and drives. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys haven't been to this channel before, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay tuned, there's gonna be more automotive reviews and more content as I get access to newer vehicles. Like I said, a lot of the really cool cars are very hard to get to because of the car shortages. Uh, definitely gonna drive the new C-Class, possibly the new C63 when that thing comes out, and just a host of other cars. So thanks for watching, please subscribe and stay tuned to the AutoFanatic channel for more content. I'm gonna get back in, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day of the Mercedes-Benz S580 4MATIC. Take care guys.